switch over quick so you can see my terrible artwork. And at that, the new, uh, the specific title card for Explorers of Sky and also the, the one for the Nuzlocke. Approximate time that it took to create the Mystery Dungeon one was about three and a half to four hours. Granted, I could have been a little quicker, but I was also doing a bunch of multitasking, which you don't want to multitask when drawing. Just saying. It's also relatively simple, but it still gets the point across. Me being the klutzy person that I am at the front as the Trico, and falling for a chestnut trap. Meanwhile, the other party members, the actual main characters, are being careful and methodical with the map. So, let's check in on Synapse, on Team Synapse. Okay, Pokemon, time to get to work. Ah, you two. Let me give you your assignment for today. Look at the jobs on the job bulletin board and the outlaw notice board. Do the listed jobs. That will do for today. Understood? No shirking your work, okay? Well, if you understand, get on with it! Aye, aye, sir. We've already gone through the story introduction for the two boards. From here on out, however, it is possible for you to take multiple jobs for a single objective. So let's see, search for Geodude, find a decoy orb, and help. I think we can handle the D-list the D -list quests. There aren't any outlaw boards and outlaw jobs currently, though. So at least for now, these are our jobs. You can take as many jobs as you want. I think you can take a maximum of eight at any point. You don't have to accept any of them right away. It's a two-step process. First step being take the board from the take the mission from the board. Second step, accept the actual mission and open the mail. The, the second step is what triggers the objective within the dungeon that you're going to be going to. And at that, I should also consider putting a few things away. At that... Take out my money for a little bit, just so I can check what's in the shop. Because every single day, the shop's goods do change at least a little bit. Red Gummy is probably going to be something I buy immediately. Better to up my IQ now than later. Meanwhile... In the other shop, we've got a Thunder TM that I definitely couldn't afford whatsoever. Drought Orb, Rainy Orb, and Sunny Orb. These three are all... Actually, these two specifically cause a weather effect. Either bright sun or pouring rain for the entire floor. The Drought Orb is different. What the Drought Orb does is take any liquid tiles on a map, so any lava, any rain, and then remove them. This can make floors even wider, and in some cases get you access to secret treasure holes. But it can also cause more enemies to spawn, specifically because it's more empty space and more places for enemies to spawn. It could be a good idea, not always. Let's drop off the rest of our cash. Actually, I think I can up the sound of this specific game a little bit. Because I'm pretty sure I'm plenty loud as is. Let yeah. Just tested quick. 
I could afford to have the game audio on this a little louder. Kangaskhan storage. I usually like to have a good stock of these items, just in case I might need them. The transfer orb I don't necessarily need right now. XI seed I can also put away. And there. Okay, you're still not doing anything, and I think the uh, other area also isn't up yet either. I think it takes a couple days. Just keep the Marowak Dojo in mind for now, because that's something that's going to unlock soon. And uh, that have events we could do there. Let's see, Drenched Bluff. There we go. So, let's get to work! There are several different categories for jobs that you could perform within this game. It's a larger subsection than what you think. There we go. I remember how I access the... There we go. Jobs can be delivery quests, they can be find quests, they can also be rescue quests. Rescue quests each have their own two separate categories, either a specific floor or a non-specific floor that where you just need to search around and hope for the best. Burn. Welcome back to Nilto. <laughs> Did you put the pussy away? That'll do for my dirty jokes hour. <laughs> okay, nothing here so far. Ah, out of my way, Anorith. If I remember correctly, our objectives are search for a Geodude, which means the Geodude could be on any part of the floor. There's also objectives for the 3rd and 5th floors, I believe, or 4th and 5th? Regardless, we're gonna need to do some general dungeoneering anyway. And besides that, even after I complete all the objectives that I have within a dungeon, usually I try to complete the dungeon too, just so I can have some extra supplies. I'm a very careful type. Saleyama levels up. Excellent. And our first destination. Whenever you get that message, that means you have an objective on the floor to complete, and it's probably not a good idea to leave until you reach that objective. You only really want to leave if you don't have the means to clear the objective, such as, say you had an item quest, but didn't have the item that you need to deliver with you. You could leave and checkpoint the quest, come back to it later, and you will not fail it. Is it a good idea? Not exactly, but if you don't have what you need, there's not much you can do. Ooh, Blast Seed. Nice. And I guess the objective is over in this direction, because I didn't see it. Alright, well, I'm at it. Another thing I do need to change. Bottom screen should probably not have a map on it, just so people can see. Sleep Seed. What the hell? see any objective Pokemon here. Rescue Corsola. 
Oh, no. No! Don't tell me, game! The corsola head better not be on water. Because I can't cross water. Oh, the corsola is up there. There are different marks on the map for various things. Anything yellow is usually either an ally Pokemon or an objective. Poof! After clearing an objective, you could choose to either leave immediately or continue exploring. Again, we're going to continue exploring pretty much all the time. Any supplies we can get will help us in the long run. Donk. Thank you, Seliana. And destination floor. Knock it off, Anorith. Ooh, Max Elixir. That's helpful. An XI seed, some extra Geo Petals. And the Decoy Orb Objective Item. Item bounty objectives are usually in one of two flavors. Either you need to find a specific item within the dungeon and leave with it within your inventory, or otherwise you need to have the item already with you, or otherwise pick it up within the dungeon, and then deliver it to a specific Pokémon, who just so happens to be within that dungeon. Where is the stairs? Okay, I don't think I explored the- I don't think I uncovered the stairs yet. That's why they're not around. Knock it off, you. There we go. And last objective. All we need to do at some point is find that Geodude, who's just hanging out somewhere. Ooh, Warp Seed. It'll be handy in a pinch. In the worst case scenario, if we find an enemy that's a little too strong for us, we could just say, go away and toss a Warp Seed in its general direction. Shoot, I'm out of power for... I'm out of power for Ember. That's a problem. Sixth floor. And our destinate Our last destination. So, just gotta find... Oh, wow! Hello there, Geo dude. By the look of it, we have two more item slots. I may want to consider eating something. I don't think I need this many pe peach berries, so just chew on one for now. Because it'll at least be a set 5 hunger that I can recover. Right there. 
for the sixth floor. If I remember correctly, Drenched Bluff goes up to seven floors. And we're starting to run out of hunger. There we go. Dungeon end. For every objective we complete, we gain we can gain some item rewards, but also cash. In this case, a gray gummy. Some explorer rank points, which will be necessary for increasing our explorer rank. More on that later. A gold ribbon. That is an incredible boon. If you find gold items like this, you can sell them for a decent amount of money. And by decent, I mean like 800 to 1,000 poke, I think, a piece. And that's pretty good, actually. And lastly, a straight 150 poke and a grass gummy. It's so adorable. We should get some sleep. Let's make to let's make tomorrow another good day, Casey. Night. The Gatekeepers. Oh no, it's this one. The next morning, I stroked my beard and up and up! Oh, I guess I'm not stroking my beard anymore. Save. And onward. Hey, you two! Huh? We need your help with something today. Diglett, I brought him. Thanks, Ladred. You two are doing sentry duty today. Sorry, I'm usually the one to do sentry duty. But today, my dad gave me his duty on of updating the boards. That's why I can't man my post. It'd be great if someone could take over my sentry for today. And that's why you're here. Please, do a good job for me. Bye. And that's that. I didn't follow that. How did we get involved in this? Shut your yap! No more belly aching! Go do your duty! Uh, my head hurts. So, what are we expected to do? Climb down this hole and stand guard. You're on sentry duty. Uh, again, we don't know what that entails. You're the right. Sentry duty. Can't have suspicious characters coming into the guild. So we station a sentry below the guild entrance to evaluate visitors. When you find someone, you have, when you first came here, you had your footprint evaluated, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. Oh, weird hole in front of the gate. I stood on that grating, then someone shouted up at me. It startled me. Okay, so we climb down this hole, then... The tunnel down there leads to the sentry post. Diglett burrows through it and pops out underneath the sentry post. From the sentry post, Diggle inspects the footprint of visitors, identifies them, then informs me. Then I decide if the Pokemon's suspicious or not, and open the gate if he passes muster. So we serve as the guild's gatekeepers. That's the gist of it. Look, all you have to do is inspect the footprints of the visitors, then tell me what Pokemon they are. Alright, understood? 
There's a little more to this than meets the eye. Essentially, it's a series of timed challenges where you're presented a footprint, given a few hints, and then have to guess what Pokemon it is. If you're right, and complete this, I believe, five times in a row, then you can get a really nice reward. Otherwise, the reward drops for every failure. Uh, it's pitch black down here. We'll have to feel our way out. Uh, we should be getting close to the entry post. Uh, to the sentry post. Ah, there it is. I see light. How's it going? Have you taken position yet? We're here. Good. Pokemon visitors will step onto the grill above the sentry post. Identify them by footprint, then inform me. Got it? We got it. As you can see here, depending on how quickly we answer the question, then we gain points. We need to at least beat 5,000 by six guesses. We can only get two wrong, though. I think this one is Scyther. Yep, there we go. That one should be C dot, I think. That looks to be probably slack off. Probably Lediba for this one. And last Pokemon. I want to say Snorlax. Oh wow, perfect score! Last Pokemon. Not Squirrel, not Poochiana. I think Linoon. Excellent! You've worked an honest day, you two. Let me review your Central Duty performance. Oh wow. Well. Results were completely perfect. You all deserve an especially large reward. So, for getting all of those right, and for beating the high score, 500 Poke. A Joy Seed, which will be really, really useful. A Ginseng. And a Life Seed. Gape up the good work! This will be an occasional thing that happens every so often. Not too often, but even then. It's an important event, and it's a very lucrative event, if you can do well. As for the items that we just picked up, the Joy Seed, when eaten, gives an instant level up to the Pokémon who eats it. They are invaluable. As for the Life Seed, if you're at maximum HP, then it increases your maximum HP permanently, if I remember correctly. took down three jobs yesterday, so let's get some new ones. Starting with... We've got Outlaws! It is possible to do a bunch of Outlaws rapid fire, but, uh... You need to be fairly beefy and be very good about what items you carry with you. Again, these are B-rank quests right now, so, uh... They're gonna hurt. 
Silver Gummy, plus some extra rewards. 250 Poke, 250 Poke. And this one's just a Vile Seed. The Vile Seed by itself might be a good idea, and Lilip isn't too bad of Pokémon. Oh no wait, Lilip is the client. Instead, we just need to take the berry from the Kabuto. Chingling, Corsola, Kabuto. Okay, this- I don't think this is too bad. I'm not sure if I'll be able to handle all four of them. I may be able to. We'll see. I'm not sure if I have a Rost Berry at all. So in the worst case scenario, I may need to buy one. Let's at least see what's, uh, at Kecleon. No such luck. Although, you do have a Reviver Seed. I want. Always good to carry one of those. As for things to sell... Oh, right, I did get that gold, that gold ribbon, so probably that. Don't really have too much of a use for the grass gummy, so that can go away. Geopebbles, too. Oh, shoot, I forgot to withdraw all the thinger. That's store me. Wrong button. There we go. So, let's take out that gold ribbon. What else to take out? Uh... I forget what type the gray gummy is for. Rock types. So probably hold on to that for now, just in case. Yeah, just straight up boosts the Pokémon's max HP. So that's something I might want to consume. And I don't have a Rost Berry. Huh. Oh, that's gonna be- that's gonna be a problem. I'll at least keep what I've got. Check the other shop, see what's in this one. It's still kind of useless. Reduces the target's accuracy by one level. Not great. It's not a great move. And even then, we don't have anyone to learn it. Orbs aren't great either, so I guess we're just gonna have to make do with what we've got. We have five objectives, four is it four mercs to merc, and a Rossberry to find. Time to go to work. <laughs>